Chapter 7 Benefiting the Living and the Dead At that time, Earth Star Bodhisattva Mahasattva said to the Buddha, World on Earth One, I see that every single movement or stirring of thought on the part of beings of Jambu Pipa is an offense. Beings tend to use up any wholesome benefits they accrue and many of them end up retreating from their initial resolve. If they encounter evil conditions, they magnify them with every thought. They are like people trying to carry heavy ropes while walking through mud. Each step becomes more difficult and the ropes more cumbersome as their feet sink deeper. If they meet a mentor, he may be strong enough to lighten or even totally remove their burdens. Helping them thus, the mentor will then advise them to stay on solid ground and be mindful never to go back into that treacherous path. World Honored One The bad habits of beings range from minor to major. Since all beings have such habits, their families or relatives should create blessings for them when they are on the verge of dying in order to assist them on the road ahead. That may be done by hanging banners and canopies, lighting oil lamps, reciting the sacred sutras, and making offerings before the images of Buddhas or sages. Another way to assist them is by reciting the names of Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, and Pratika Buddhas so that the recitation of each name passes by the ear of the dying one and is heard in his fundamental consciousness. Suppose the evil karma created by beings was such that they ought to fall into the bad destinies. If their relatives cultivate wholesome causes on their behalf when they are close to death, then their manifold offenses can be dissolved. If relatives can further do many good deeds during the first 49 days after the death of such beings, then the decreased can leave the evil destinies forever, be born as humans and gods, and receive a supremely wonderful bliss. Their surviving relatives will also receive limitless benefits. Therefore, before the Buddhas, world honored ones, as well as before the gods, dragons, and the rest of the Eightfold Division, humans and non-humans, I now exhort beings of Jambu Vipa to be careful to avoid harming, killing, and doing other unwholesome deeds to refrain from worshipping ghosts and spirits or making sacrifices to them, and never to call on mountain sprites on the day of death. Why is that? Killing, harming, and making sacrifices do not even have a tiny hairbreadth of power with which to benefit the deceased. Such acts only bind up the conditions of offenses so that they grow ever deeper and heavier. The deceased might have been due to increase his potential for sexhood or gain birth among humans or gods in his next life or in the future. But if his family commits offenses in his name, his good rebirth will be delayed. How much more would that be the case for people on the verge of death who during their lives had failed to plant even a few good roots? Each offender has to undergo the bad destinies according to his own karma. How could anyone bear to have relatives and add to that karma? That would be like having a neighbor add a few more things to a load of over a hundred pounds being carried by someone who had already traveled a long distance and who had not eaten for three days. If that extra weight were added, that person's burden 
will become even more unbearable. Won't honored one, I see that beings of Jambudvipa will themselves receive the benefit of any good deeds they are able to do that accord with the Buddha's teachings. That holds true even when the deeds are as small as a strand of hair, a drop of water, a grain of sand, or a mold of dust. After that had been said, an elder named the Great Eloquence rose in the assembly. He had realized non-production long ago and was appearing in the body of an elder only to teach and transform those in the ten directions. Putting his palms together respectfully, he asked the Earth Star Bodhisattva, Great Lord, after a pupil in Jambuvipa die, and their close and distant relatives cultivate merit by making vegetarian meal offerings and doing other such goodies, will the deceased obtain merit and virtue significant enough to bring about their liberation? Earth Star replied, Elder, based on the awesome power of the Buddhas, I will now espouse he, this principle for the sake of beings of the present and future. Elder, if beings of the present and future when on the verge of dying hear the name of one Buddha, one Bodhisattva, or one Prajika Buddha, they will attain liberation whether they have committed offenses or not. When men or women laden with offenses who failed to plant good causes die, even they can receive one-seventh of any merit dedicated to them by relatives who do good deeds on their behalf. The other six-sevenths the, of the merit will return to the living relatives who did the good deeds. It follows that good men and women of the present and future who cultivate why they are strong and healthy will receive all of the benefit derived. The arrival of the great ghost of impermanence is so unexpected that the deceased one's consciousness is first warm in darkness and obscurity unaware of offenses and blessings. For 49 days, the deceased are as if deluded or deaf, or as if in course where their karmic retributions are being decided. Once judgment is fixed, they are reborn according to their karma. In the time before rebirths are determined, the deceased suffer from thousands upon thousands of anxieties. How much more is that the case for those who are to fall into the bad destinies? Throughout 49 days, those whose lives have ended and who have not yet been reborn will be hoping every moment that their immediate relatives will earn blessings powerful enough to rescue them. At the end of that time, the deceased will undergo retribution according to their karma. If someone is an offender, he may pass through hundreds of thousands of years without even a day's liberation. If someone's offenses deserve a fivefold relentless retribution, he will fall into the great house and undergo incessant suffering throughout hundreds of millions of ends. Moreover, elder. When beings who have committed comic offenses die, their relatives may prepare vegetarian offerings to aid them on their comic paths. In the process of preparing the vegetarian meal and before it has been eaten, rice washing water and vegetable leaves should not be thrown on the ground. Before the food is offered to the Buddhas and the Sangha, no one should eat it. If there is a laxness or transgression in this matter, then the deceased will receive no strength from it. But if purity is rigorously maintained in making the offering to the Buddhas and the Sangha, 
the deceased will receive one seventh of the merit. Therefore, elder, by performing vegetarian offerings on behalf of deceased fathers, mothers, and other relatives while making earnest supplication on their behalf, beings of Jambu Fipa benefit both the living and the dead. After that was said, thousands of billions of Nayutas of ghosts and spirits of Jambu Fipa who were in the palace of the Chajashim Shaheven made the unlimited resolve to attain Bodhi. The elder great eloquence made obeisance and withdrew. <laughs> Ha ha ha, unsan modi so ha ha ha.